In this video, I show you from beginning to end how to flash your BIOS, configure your BIOS, install Windows 11, then install all of the drivers and install all the applications to get you up and ready to start playing your favorite games. Edit your videos, edit your photos, do whatever it is you like to do on your machine. This is actually going to be my workstation where I'm going to be editing videos just like this. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. So yes, there's some prep work we need to do before we get started. Let me show you real quick. We're going to need to create a Windows 11 thumb drive to install Windows 11. We'll need to use another computer to do that. In the description below, I have instructions on how to do that. Then we're going to need a second thumb drive, this time a FAT32 formatted thumb drive. Let me show you how to do that. So I'm gonna pop it in the USB port real quick. All right, it's already formatted, but to show you how to do that, I'm gonna click on this PC, and then we're going to go to that thumb drive, which I've named BNF, Bias and Files. I'm just gonna right click on it, and I'm going to click Format. Okay, just make sure it's that thumb drive, and then make sure your file system is FAT32, and then you can name it whatever you'd like. And make sure Quick Format is enabled, and then click Start, and OK. It has to be FAT32 because that's all your BIOS will read. All right, once done, we'll click OK here and we'll close out of here. After having already downloaded and created the Windows 11 install media, we're just going to close out of here. We're going to go to another website. We're going to go to the manufacturer of our motherboard. For me, it's MSI and I'm using the X670E Gaming Plus Wi-Fi motherboard. If you use a different motherboard, you have to go to your own manufacturers. If you're not sure, ask me down below and I'll help you. Then here, we're going to go to drivers and downloads and then firmware, BIOS, the latest BIOS we're going to want to grab. Mine has a beta BIOS as the latest, which means it's not 100%. Then there is one right below that. I'm kind of a daredevil or an idiot, however you want to put it, but I don't mind using betas. I've done it before, so I'll just click here to download that, all right? Now that we're downloading that, now we'll come to the drivers right over here on the drivers tab. We'll select our version of Windows. We're going to skip on the chipset. We need to get that somewhere else. Then we go to the LAN. We'll download the PCIe Ethernet drivers. Then we'll download the Bluetooth drivers and the Wi-Fi drivers because if not, we can't get on the network without them. And we see if there's anything else. We just download the latest and greatest of each of those. Then we'll go to onboard audio drivers and we'll download the latest one there. And chances are we won't need anything out of here unless we're installing RAID, which we're not. So we'll go ahead and skip that. Now coming back over to system and chipset drive. Since this motherboard is an AMD chipset motherboard, it uses an AMD processor. We're going to go to amd.com. On amd.com, we'll go to resources and support. Under Radeon graphics and AMD chipset, we'll select drivers. Then we'll scroll down a tiny bit. We'll go to browse products and we'll select chipset. Then we'll select AM5 because that's the chipset this motherboard has. And then X670E again, because that's the chipset. Then we'll click submit. Since we're using Windows 11, I'll download the latest and greatest chipset drivers for Windows 11. And I'm not going to need these again unless we're utilizing RAID. I'll go ahead and download the MPU driver as well. Okay, so now on another tab, since we're using an NVIDIA graphics card, we'll go to NVIDIA.com, then we'll go to Drivers. We'll select GeForce here product series, whatever series we have. We happen to have the RTX 40 series product. We're using the RTX 4090 Windows 11. I'm using the game ready driver, even though I will be using it for my workstation as well. I'll still use the GRD instead of the SD and then select English for my language and click search. And then finally download once it takes me to the latest and greatest version and then download and then it'll start downloading. And then all of this is downloading here, what hasn't already. And then coming over here, we'll go to height.com since I know I'm using the height case. And then I go to Nexus and I download the Nexus software. Nexus is what's going to be controlling all of the RGB lighting and all the fans and stuff. So that's part of the case and the fans as well. 
your case might be a little bit different. So now that we're done there, we can see over here, everything is done being downloaded. So we'll click on the folder here and now we're on everything. Now I've already downloaded all of this. I've downloaded to my driver's folder. Everything we've talked about is right over here. I extracted the BIOS file. So for example, let me delete this here. So this 7E16 versions 171.zip, if I double click on there, I'm inside of the zip. We can see that right here. And then I can just right click on this folder, click copy, come out one of here and then paste it at the root of the driver's folder. So now the BIOS file is right out here. Here's a text file describing everything that's inside of the BIOS. We don't care about that right now. This is our BIOS file. So now all I do is select all of these. I right click and then I click copy and now i'll go to that whatever drive right over here now inside of that whatever drive we'll right click and paste it might take a minute depending on how slow or how fast that thumb drive is and of course depending on the size but we could see here it was a little over two gigs and it's a 32 gig thumb drive just in case i'll have links down in the description below where you can pick up some of those thumb drives as well i bought a ton of them they come in handy And now that we're done here, let's go take the thumb drives to the new PC. So we're gonna start off by flashing the BIOS real quick. So we're going to need our FAT32 formatted thumb drive with the BIOS on it. So we'll plug it in and we'll go ahead and turn on the system. And then we'll start tapping the delete key to enter the BIOS. Once we're in the BIOS, we can see the BIOS build date right over here. It's kind of old and the BIOS version right over here, 110. We're not going to need to do anything here. And then we'll also see the incorrect date here. So what we're going to need to do is click on the M flash over here. It's going to warn us that we're going to restart the computer to enter the flash mode. Do we want to enter the flash mode? So then we'll click yes to enter flash mode. It might take a minute, so don't freak out. Once it restarts, it's going to try to figure out where the BIOS is. So we need to tell it. So first off, it's under generic disk. And actually, I have the wrong disk installed. I have the Windows 11 one, so I'm going to remove that one. Pop in the correct FAT32 formatted thumb drive. And I'm going to click over here just to rescan again. Then here we go to SMI USB disk. And then here we'll see that BIOS version. So we'll click on there. And then, yep, that's the one we want. Click on there. You can see down here, current BIOS version is version 1.10. The selected BIOS, the one we just clicked on, is 1.71. So then we'll go ahead and click yes to select this file. And then we automatically start flashing the BIOS. This is gonna take a minute. Don't freak out. Your computer is probably going to end up restarting once or twice. That's completely normal. Might even restart three or four times. Don't freak out. All right, so there you have it. It just shut down on me. Don't freak out. It just started back up. Let's go into the BIOS real quick. So now that we've flashed the BIOS and we're in the BIOS, we need to take care of a few settings so that we can install Windows correctly. Aside from correctly, we're going to make sure that we get the most performance out of our system. Now realize, I'm setting up the BIOS with my hardware specs in mind. Yours may be a little bit different. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask down below. So now that we're in, we can see the correct BIOS build date. The very first thing you want to do when you first flash your BIOS and you're back in the BIOS to get all of the updates your BIOS has, bring them up to the surface. We're going to go ahead, hit F6 to load optimized defaults. And then you're going to want to press yes. We're going to come under advanced just because it's a little bit easier to read. And we go under settings and then under system status. Now I've already played a little bit with the BIOS, but regardless, your date and time after you flash your BIOS will be incorrect. Make sure you set those correctly, especially for Windows. Then after you set that, click settings again. We're going to go into advanced and then under PCIe, PCI subsystem settings. You want to make sure that resize bar is enabled. So coming out of there, integrated graphics configuration. Now on this one, if you're using on die graphics, graphics from your AMD CPU, you want to make sure you're using IGD. Now, if you're using an external graphics card, like I'm using a 4090, you want to select peg here under integrated graphics along the same method if we're using a graphics card we'll go ahead and disable this hybrid graphics if you're using an amd cpu and an amd graphics card you want to set this to enabled but if you're using nvidia like i am you want to make sure you have that disabled 
coming under settings, we'll go under boot. Now your boot probably will look a little bit like mine, but if we come under UEFI hard disk drive BBS priorities, you'll notice I already have a Windows boot manager. That's because the M.2 SSD, I've already installed Windows on it and we're going to take care of that here. So yours may not look like that. Coming out of there, we'll go under security. Under security, we want to go under trusted computing. Since we're installing Windows 11, we want to make sure that AMD FTPM switch is set to AMD CPU FTPM and we can leave the rest as it is now. Then coming out of there, we're going to click under OC. Now here, we want to make sure depending on your RAM, this particular RAM is AXMP enabled. So I want to enable this, any one of these profiles. I'll choose profile number one. That goes ahead and sets my memory to 6,000 and then my cache RAS and TRAS latencies right down here as well. That's also going to set all of my voltages. So I don't need to play with any of that down here then memory context restore is incredibly important that you just enable this if you don't enable that that will make you take about a minute or two or three to restart because every time you restart it retrains your ram so then after we set memory context restore we come down here and we go to digital power on cpu load line calibration we'll go ahead and select mode one the 7950 on its own gets real hot. So we set the LLC to one from auto. That way it doesn't get to play with all the others so that it gets extremely hot. We'd like to keep it on one. And now coming out of here, you will notice that A, XMP is enabled. We're going to go under hardware monitor. This one's incredibly important because we're using liquid cool. You want to make sure that CPU number one, because we're on the plug up here for CPU number one is not only enabled, but is set to smart fan mode and you can play with these a little bit later on you also want to make sure you're under pwm because we are connected to a pwm header on the motherboard and we'll save this for a little bit later on when we're in windows itself then coming out of here lastly up here you're going to notice all of these boot priorities we want to make sure that we slide this uefi usb key the one we have windows 11 on so that we can install we'll click hold and slide it all the way to the left that way it becomes the initial boot drive so that we can install windows off so now we're going to hit f10 f10 will allow us to save all of our settings we can see them here and then because we set it we'll start to boot off of the thumb drive immediately so i'm going to go ahead and click yes don't worry again the system is going to shut down take a few seconds and then restart all on its own again you don't need to worry about it. And now that we've put the Windows 11 thumb drive as the primary boot device, we're booting to the thumb drive now. Now that we've booted from the Windows 11 thumb drive, we'll click next and install now. And since we don't have a key right now, I'm going to select, I don't have a product key. If you had one, you can install it. And depending on what version of Windows you're going to install, select that here, then click next. Make sure to read through all this important information, then click I accept and next and now click custom you have to be very careful at this part even if you've done it a thousand times you can easily delete something you're not supposed to i highly recommend at this portion you only have one ssd m.2 ssd hard drive one piece of storage that you want to install windows on because you might delete the wrong thing so i recommend disconnect all other hard drives or ssds or m.2 drives and only have the one you want windows installed on connected right now so with that said I know what all of these drives are. I'm going to delete them all. Now, the reason we want them deleted is because we don't want all the other garbage on those drives to ruin our install of Windows. So because I know this is my two terabyte drive, again, I'm deleting everything on my drives. This is my two terabyte drive so that I know that this drive one of unallocated space at 1.8 terabytes, that's my C drive. These other drives I can deal with at a later point and we will in this video. But again, because I know what this drive is, drive one is my unallocated drive. I'm going to select that drive and that's the main SSD I put in this machine. I'm going to select next on this to install it on that two terabyte drive. And now it's copying Windows onto that drive to continue the installation. One second. Now at this point, Windows goes ahead and restarts for us. Again, it will restart your computer, so don't freak out. And at this point, you can also remove that thumb drive so that it can boot correctly off of that SSD 
M.2 drive or hard drive. Now back into Windows. So is this the right country? So select your country or region here. Click yes. Right keyboard layout, select your keyboard layout and click yes. Do we want to add a second keyboard layout? Let's go ahead and skip that. Let's connect you to a network. Now, some of you may have issues connecting to a network at this point, either because A, Windows doesn't have your driver on that drive already, or B, maybe you don't have any place to connect it or you don't have any Wi-Fi just yet. Let me help you skip that real quick. So here we're going to go ahead and press Shift F10, then make sure to click in this DOS prompt so that the prompt is selected. And then we're going to type OOBE backslash by pass NRO and then hit enter. Now that's gonna go ahead and restart your PC and bring you back to the setup. And then here we'll select again the region, keyboard layout and second keyboard layout. Now we're back here. Now you'll see it says I don't have internet. So we can select that. Then continue with limited setup. It's not really limited. Shh. Then we'll enter your name. This is mine, don't cheat. And enter your password. And then select what you'd like to over here and then click accept. All right, then when we're finally done, we're in Windows. You can celebrate. No, not really. Now we need to install all of the drivers and software we put on this thumb drive. So we'll go ahead and pop in the drive again. And now what I like to do, you don't have to do it just like I do it, but I like to copy all of these drivers and I like to copy them locally by creating a folder on the root of the C drive called drivers. And then I copy them all there. So one second. Now, the reason I copy all of the drivers from that thumb drive to a local drive on that machine is because during the chipset install, for example, things will disconnect and then form a connection back again. I don't want anything to break in between that connection. So I keep everything local. Everything it installs is inside. The very first thing we're going to want to install is the AMD chipset software that controls the motherboard. We'll click yes here. Now, while that's installing, I like to come over here and type UHC, change user account control settings, okay, and yes. Now that's a potential security concern there because now Windows isn't going to warn you, hey, you're clicking this button, hey, you're clicking that button, hey, you're clicking that button. I like to let Windows let me decide what I want to do. Security is totally up to you though. And I want to install all of this, so I'll click install. And now that we're done with the chipset, the way I like to do it is I like to click close because as you click close, some things still happen in the background rather than clicking restart. Then I'll right click on the start button, hover over shutdown or sign out, and then I manually click restart. Anytime a program asks you to restart, I always highly recommend to restart. It only takes a few seconds. All right, and now we'll come back into File Explorer under this PC, C drive, drivers. The correct way to do this is installing everything from the motherboard outwards. The first thing we're going to want to do though is install 7-zip so that we can extract every single one of the zip files. So one of the things I also downloaded was 7-zip. So I'm going to install that here. You can use whichever version you'd like, but I prefer 7-zip. Quick install. So now after that, I'm going to delete 7-zip. I'm going to delete the BIOS just to clear the clutter out a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and expand the Viper RGB for the memory. Just paste that right in there. Delete that. Realtek. This is for the ethernet port. So copy that, paste it out here. So I'm gonna do that for all of them. So give me one second, I'll be right back. Now that we have all of this extracted and everything deleted to clear the clutter, let's go ahead and start by installing the Realtek PCIe LAN. This will be a quick and easy install. So double click on the setup. And one thing actually I wanna show you, if you right click on the start button and then go to device manager, you'll notice all these kind of errors here. This is telling you that there's things, different drivers and everything that you're missing. So we're installing them now. Here, I'll click next, install, and then I'll click finish here. We'll come back and then we'll install the AMD Wi-Fi drivers. And then we'll click MSI setup DRV, and then we'll click install. 
and finish we'll click ok there and close out of here we'll close this then we'll go to amd bluetooth drivers and then double click on here and install and then click finish here we'll close out of here and then we'll install the realtek hd universal driver scroll down a bit double click on the setup then click next all right and again this is asking us to restart so we'll do no finish right click shut down our sign out and restart now that we're done installing everything on the motherboard we'll come back into this pc now we'll start installing things attached to the motherboard so we'll go to drivers now the only thing we really have attached is that graphics card the rtx 4090 so we'll go ahead double click on that click ok to start the install agree and continue custom next and perform a clean install. Even though we have a clean install of Windows, I always like to select this just in case to remove any garbage that may be in the back end. A clean install is still an install. And then click next here. And then uncheck these guys. We don't care about that just for right now. And then we'll go ahead and install the AMD NPU. We'll install the height Nexus setup because that is connected. I agree and anyone who uses this computer and next install we'll go ahead and run that just real quick allow access and I'm going to continue as a guest just for right now we'll go ahead and leave this default for now video wallpapers that's definitely something we're going to look into here it gives us different information and it's going to all pull in in a sec that's not the purpose of this video so we'll skip that for now and now we'll install the MSI center bring it all together okay here install then click finish and okay over here click start and we'll type msi center and make sure to read through all of this and check here then click okay the msi center is not only great for dealing with rgb and all that stuff but it also gives us a hand to let us know that hey this piece of software might be updated or this bias might be updated check it out real quick so i'm just showing you that real quick then there's a little bit more i need to show you so at this point, I do recommend connecting to the network, Wi-Fi or Ethernet, either which way. All right, and start now. Here we get to select what kind of center. I'm just going to select my stuff. You can select your own. And here, whatever you'd like to install. All right, and then here it will start downloading and installing all the different versions of all the software. Again, you don't have to use this software. I kind of like it though. So then again, here is where we can install and configure all the RGB stuff. That's cool. Hardware monitoring is another one I like to use. I don't use it all the time, but it does help out. That way you can see all your things here. I like to come under support and then live update. And I like to see, I like to scan. I like to see what's here. So here we can see Norton 360 is garbage. Don't put a check here. If we wanted to, we can install IDA 64, which is a great piece of software. I'm not going to install it now. I will install it later though. Then under Microsoft app, we'll click over here and then we'll install the audio control and open. So that take care of itself there. So we can close out of that and we can close out of this, but it's always good to have this in the background. After a successful install, we'll right click on the start button, go to device manager, and we'll see everything is installed properly. There aren't any drivers missing. Now there's windows update. So we'll click close out of there. We'll click start, we'll type update, and then we'll go to windows update settings and check for updates. You're using Windows. You're gonna use Windows all the time. You want to make sure Windows is totally updated. I'm always updated to the very latest. I haven't had any issues. I always update my drivers and BIOS as well. That's the way I like to do it. You may be a little bit different, but I'm trying to show you the way I do it. Pick and choose what you like there. Immediately, we can see, even though I just created this Windows installer, it's downloading a bunch of Windows updates. So even though it is a new install, it's installing the latest and greatest, all of these updates as well. So they might take a little time. If you have a slower internet at home, you may wanna do this after hours, or if you're gonna go take a shower, go ahead and start downloading some updates. When you come back, they might be done. Now that we're done here, we can see completed, pending restart, all that good stuff. We're Go ahead and click restart now all right now that we're back in windows click back over here we'll type in update again 
and let's check to see if there aren't any more updates we need. I also like to enable to get the latest update and under advanced, receive updates for other Microsoft products. And we'll do, oh, there we go. It's doing a few more updates. Again, I like to stay on top of all of my updates. And once that's done, one more time, just for good measures, perfect. So we can close out of here. And now what I like to do to keep things nice and optimized is I'll come under here, start and type in power. Then I'll select choose a power plan. I'll click show additional plans and I'll select ultimate. If it's not available, I'll select high, but I'll select ultimate. Then I'll change plan settings. I'll make sure to turn this to never. I like to select that. I'll save changes. Then I'll come back in, change advanced power settings. I make sure that hard disks are set to zero and also sleep is set to never. And yeah, hard disks set to never. So we're good here. Then I'll click power up here just to make sure ultimate performance is selected. Then I'll close out of here. For me, for my RTX 4090, I'll right click on the background. Then I'll select show more options and display settings. Now here, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit till I see advanced display, I'll click that. Then under choose a refresh rate, I'll select the highest possible my monitor supports. So I'll click on that and then I'll select keep changes. So now we're at the highest possible refresh rate the monitor supports, so the video can be that much more smooth, but there's a little bit more. So if we close out of here and I right click again on the background, this time I select show more option. Then I select NVIDIA control panel. Now here under NVIDIA control panel, I'll select set up G-Sync. Because my monitor is G-Sync compatible, I want to make sure that enable G-Sync for G-Sync compatible monitors is enabled. And I'll select enable for windowed and full screen mode, but I'll also select enable settings for the selected display model, just in case it's not there. And I'll click apply and close out of that. That way I will get the smoothest video possible on this monitor and this graphics card. Now we can open up the height profile and we can see all of that information that has populated so far. I haven't done this just yet, so it may be a little bit outdated. Oh, and there's a new firmware. I'll select that. I did say I'd like to stay updated. This is one example. And it's saying I need to restart, so one second. Now, we can't forget about the other M.2 and the other SSD that we have inside of the system. So if we go to File Explorer, then we go to this PC, it's not there. So to bring those out, we'll right click on the start button, then we'll click disk management. Then coming over here, we'll notice one, one terabyte unallocated drive, disk zero. And if we scroll down, we'll see another one, another one terabyte unallocated drive. Unallocated means it doesn't have a partition. So what we'll do on here, we'll go to the top one, we'll right click over here on this blank space, and if it was offline, we'll come here and click online, but it's already online. So we'll leave that there. Now here on the drive, we'll right click on the unallocated space and we'll click new simple volume. We'll go through the simple volume wizard, basically next all the way through, and we'll give it a name of new SSD and next, next. And that'll go quick, a few mm -hmm. seconds. And there you go. We'll click down here and open it up and we have a new SSD. Now let me make it a little bit different for the other one, just to show you a different kind of example. On this guy, we're going to right click on it, select new simple volume, next. And this one, I only want it to be 500 gigs. I wanna space it out. So 500 gigs instead of a terabyte. Next, and I want to change that one to drive G instead. I'm going to assign it and drive G, next and finish. So that's going to split up and drive G opens up. So that's going to split up that drive. So now with the other 500 gigs, we can just right click on that. New simple volume, next, next. And, and we'll see here all the remaining space that we have. So we'll click next and I'll leave that drive F next. And here is the other partition and click next and finish. I'll close that. So then we have on disk zero, which is one drive, we have a partition that's 500 gigs and then another partition that's 500 gigs. So we'll close out of here. And then here we'll see 
our C drive, our entire D drive, and I put one too many S's there, but that's okay. And then over here, we'll find our other one dot terabyte drive, but partitioned off to 500 gigs. And then coming over here, the other portion of that drive also partitioned to 500 gigs. Now, if you've never done that before, this was an amazing trip and it showed you so much. And if you've done it before, you might have learned a thing or three, but this is how you do it every single time. Mind you, of course, your hardware and your software and your settings will differ from mine. And then of course, as time passes, but this is going to give you everything you need to know how to do this in the future for every single system. And I'm so happy that I can bring you along for that ride. I'm dying to get started on this system because again, this is going to be my workstation where I edit all of these kind of videos just for you. So let me know if there's any other video you'd like to see on this workstation before I actually put it over there on my desk and get started. If you've never done anything like this and you want to learn how to build a machine just like this, actually how I built this very machine, check out this video here up above and there's going to be a lot more with this. Iggy with this bite for you out. See you guys.